Hello, and welcome to An Hour with an Angel, with Linda Dillon, the channel for the Count to Love Love and author of The Great Awakening, and Steve Beckow of the 2012 scenario. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm Graham Duye. Our guest today is the Divine Mother. And this is a particularly welcome show, as last year, almost a year ago today, on December 12, 2011, we started our first show with An Hour with An Angel. An Hour with An Angel was our first show for In Light Radio, so it's a particularly exciting show today. And it's great to have you with us. And certainly we have some pretty key dates coming up for this month, which I'm sure Steve and the Divine Mother will talk about. So, with that, I'll pass it over to you, Steve. Thank you, Graham. And it is a cause for celebration, and it's also a cause for celebration to have the Divine Mother. With us, Mother, welcome to the show. It's a great honor to be in your presence. And welcome to you. Greetings. Greetings, Mother. I am the Divine Mother, Mother of One, Mother of All, Mother of each of you, for you carry the spark and the essence of our love. And yes, it has been a year, it has been a journey, but I also say to you it has been a journey of eons. It has been a journey of thousands of years, and even in terms of your human preparation, whether you have acknowledged or known it, it has been a preparation of twenty-five and a half years. So, here we are at the time of the Divine Convergence. You began this journey of human preparation with your harmonic convergence, but now you prepare and you go forward as my children, my love, my fulfillment, to participate in the Divine Convergence. We will talk about this. But I wish you to be able to ask your questions, because it is seldom that I come through in this way. So, go ahead, my sweet, dear one. Thank you, Mother. And just before asking you my first question, I might mention to listeners that you're not simply, and I'm using words that I hope will not offend any listeners, but you're not simply a god among gods, but you're the source of creation, preservation, and transformation. You are the Holy Father in form. So, when Linda channels you, I know there's quite a significant energy that she must deal with. So I mentioned to that to listeners, if they hear Linda being a bit slower in her delivery, or whatever. The journey to 1212 began long ago. Mother, this is the last interview, before December 12, 2012, and so maybe we could start with that date. It's the second last before December 21, 2012, which you just mentioned. Perhaps we could begin by asking you if you can tell our listeners what they can expect to see and feel on December 12, 2012. Understand this journey of 12 twelfths began many years ago in your time and understanding. This is a portal of unity. It is the opening of what you think of as the floodgates of your heart. Now, you have had a taste of that opening, the pressure that has been building since 1111, both the original 1111 and the 1111 that occurred last month. With December 12th, 12 and we want you to cover the 24 hours of 12, 12 what you will experience is the rewiring, the ignition, the lighting up of your grid, of your being, the lighting up of the grid of humanity, and of course of our beloved Gaia. Now, what you do not fully comprehend, or you are not fully aware of and that is why I mention it is that this is an ignition point for unification, for this is a process of unification both within and without. And what it is doing is unifying you to this universe as well. It is part of your soul journey and choices that you have made a very long time ago. The energy of this ignition, of this unification, as you begin what we guide you to do and what we ask you to participate in, spreads out throughout this particular universe and even on the edges far beyond. So what you feel, what you experience in your question, dear Steve, is unification of yourself, of all parts of your field, and within that, unification with us, and with Gaia, and with each other, with your star brothers and sisters. What it does is it starts the connections, the connectedness, which is a word this channel always says does not exist. It starts a connectedness between all of you so that the love flows freely, that the ability to create and co-create flows freely. And what we also say is that it is the unification of dimensions, the grids and realities. Now. We have said to you through many of the beings, particularly Michael, that this process is well underway. So you have been feeling this. 
but the 1212 is the opening. Think of it, you have ceremonies at this time of year, at least in the Christian world, of lighting a tree or a city, of turning on the lights. That is how you can think of 1212. We are turning on the light. What we should do on 1212? What I'm suggesting you do is to anchor in your heart, in the seat of your soul, in the totality of your being. Begin this, or set your clock I do not ask you to stay awake for 24 hours, I want you alert and in good humor but begin this meditation at 1212, just after midnight on the 11th. Then reignite again on the 12th, of course, at noon, 12, through again to the midnight 12 twelfths of the 13th. Now, this is your three days of darkness, and it will not be dark, I tell you. We are turning on the light. So, anchor in your heart, drop your cord, your being, your energy, and anchor firmly in the heart of Gaia, and then come to me, in the home of the thirteenth octave, to me, and anchor with me. Use the ray of your preference, whether it is emerald or my blue, a magenta, the blue of Michael, it matters not. But from this place of your heart anchoring, begin to send the energy, or simply allow the energy to flow throughout your entire expanded grid, which, for most of you, is about the size of the United States or Canada or Europe. You can think of yourselves as that big right now. Feel the points of light that connect to your entire field, so you are not just talking about your physicality. Turn on and allow those all to be ignited. It will be a brilliant light. Then allow and send energy, for every connection, the multidimensional, the dimensions of all your lines, all your grid lines, to be ignited, fired up. And sit with this for a few minutes at least. Then, go further out to Gaia and see her beautiful grid, which is already ignited. But if there are any points that you notice that can use more love, then connect with that grid. This is not a mental exercise. This is not a visualization, child. Connect and merge with the entire grid of Gaia, set in motion by my mighty archangels long ago. Once you have done that, and allowed that absorption, then tackle the biggest challenge and the gift of connecting with the entire grid of humanity, every point of light, every individual grid, until you know you are part of that infinite collection of light. And if you are able, or so inclined, you may continue out to your star brothers and sisters and to the outer universe. But the first three steps of your grid, the grid of Gaia, and the grid of humanity, are very important. Then you finish by allowing us to connect you to our infinite grid, to our infinite light, to our infinite love. I will be waiting for you. This is not simply an exercise. It is a new way of being and being in your presence and your field, and you allow that to continue on right through, Yes, certainly the 21st, but to the end of the year, until you are completely immersed. Because what is ascension? It is being in the heart, in love and in unity with us, and with each other and your sacred self. It is letting go. It does not in any way diminish, reduce your beauty or your light. Quite the opposite, it enhances beyond your understanding your capacity to be and to be in creation with us. So what that means is you are also at the same time not only allowing and embracing, activating the love, you are eliminating the ego as the fear-driven force in your life. Do not worry. Your delightful personality will flourish, and the truth of who you are will truly come forward. There will be some surprises, not only amongst you, but within your sacred selves as you realize who you are. And who you are in relationship to Gaia, to each other, and to me to us. So, that is the process we would like all of you to do. Will Ascension occur on 21-12-12? Thank you, Mother. And of course you've already spoken or begun to speak about December 21st, 2012. We know that there is a split among light workers over whether Ascension will be sudden or gradual, whether we'll have it on December 21st, 2012, another day, or only gradual, and not on any one day. What can you tell us about what will happen on December 21, 2012, please? First, I tell you that it is already underway. Now, some of you have chosen this December 21, 2012, as your birthday, as it were. And you are so married to this. 
That is very much a mental exercise. Your question is, will ascension be gradual, or will it be instantaneous? Oh, and by the way, mother, will it be on this specific day? You have been asking me this for eternity. Now, also understand, this is not simply your process of ascension. It is the ascension of Gaia. And what we suggest to you is that that ascension that she is undertaking will be completed on 12-12. So that is for you to pack in your understanding of what is taking place. And because this process is growing like the floodgates breaking through, it means that the energy is also growing. Now, some still hold back what we have said to you as those who have not made preparations and when I speak of preparation, I speak of the love, the letting go of the fear, the embrace of joy. And you can do that in one instant, in a millisecond of your time. Or you can take longer. Now, you cannot in this situation take forever. It is a decision point. It is a convergence. So, for some, they will be slower, and therefore they will say ascension is a slow process. But for some it will be instantaneous. And that convergence, what I say to you this divine convergence already begins on 12-12. It is already all prepared. So are there points, the twenty-first being one of them, where there are what you think of as explosions. Yes. But let us also say that those convergences, from our perspective, which is really what is important here, because it is the unfoldment of our divine plan, I do not wish to minimize, but you have chosen some dates and they have been anchored for a very long time. So yes, there will be massive openings. That is what you are asking. But the unfoldment, the shift in dimensions, is already there. And will you become more aware of it? Yes. Everybody. Yes. But you need to keep your heart open to do this. That is why many of you are feeling more and more absent, disconnected. It is not because you do not care or love, it is because you are connecting to a new grid. The lines are laid. Everything is in order. You are ready. So, the intensification, the divine convergence, it starts on 12-12, amplifies every single day what you think of as days then, again, convergence, think of amplification on the 21st, because you, the human collective, decide as well that that is your day. We have no objection to that. But it is also the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and so on. Is this clear? I try through the channel to translate. Well, when you say it is also the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, I think there will be some listeners who don't know what it refers to. Amplification. Amplification. I think our listeners will want to know if, on the 21st, a, the majority, who have opened to ascension, will find themselves on the fifth dimension, or not. I think that is the crew of the wondering, that's going on. Will the vast majority of light workers and people open to ascension find themselves on the fifth dimension on the 21st, or will it be? Yes, because they are already there. Yes. And I am asking you, pay attention first of all, let go of dates, but pay attention. Begin on 12-12 as you did on 11-11, as you did several decades ago. If you are going, you are thinking of this as an event. I understand the human mental psyche body, but if you are going to an event, a celebration, you would get dressed, you would prepare, you would cleanse yourselves, you would comb your hair. That is what I am asking you to begin doing on 12-12. You have already begun receiving the amplification of love and joy in the last month. So yes, get ready. Please. When will disease and old age lift? All right, mother. Thank you. One question that has been expressed to me often is what will it look like, how will it happen, and when will it happen that people with chronic diseases and extensive disabilities will find themselves healed and the old become young again? Again, I realize that it is a process, but when will they begin to experience relief from their disabilities or old age? Right away. Do not think that everybody wishes to claim youthful bodies of their twenties and thirties. That is not so. For there is importance to also have within this connectedness diversity that you love, that you cherish, and so do we. So it is important to honor the older wisdom, 
to honor the crone, to honor the child, to honor the difference in races. But what you are asking is when does the relief from disease begin? Yes, that is an immediate shift that is already underway, as I speak to you. What are the Galactics and Celestials doing behind the scenes? That's very reassuring. Mother, I wonder if you could take us behind the scenes. If we are in a movie, the hero might be outside the factory, but then he goes through the factory door, and he sees the product being produced. Could you tell us what the Galactics are doing behind the scenes, and the Celestials, that will cause ascension to happen? You've already told us, they are building grids. Can you tell us a bit about... The grids are already there. Let us be very clear about that. Have some of your human grids become a little frayed or weak, the way that fibers or thread or tapestry becomes. Yes. Those are being reinforced. But everybody from the company of heaven to the galactics to the intergalactics to the host of heaven is ready. No, we are not just standing around waiting. So, if you are at a movie and you are behind the set, the angelic realm and certainly the archangelic realm, and the seraphim, are very busy working overtime and your sense clearing out debris. And what do I say? It is what you call a vasana. It is what you call the ego. It is what you call those patterns, those ancient patterns that you have clung to like precious metal. So we are clearing those and helping you, each of you Gaia is already done shine your grids so that as it ignites, as you literally illuminate, that there is no speck of dust within your grid. And dust is anger, fear, hatred, greed, doubt. That is what we are doing. So if you were to picture us, we are working on each of you. We have said your fields have expanded very nicely. But think of legions of angels. First one dusts, the next one polishes, the next one shines. That is what we are doing. Your galactic brothers and sisters are in readiness. They have been a very long time. They are very, no, not infinitely patient, but they are patient, and they persevere. As you know, many walk amongst you, but they are preparing and making themselves more and more visible to you. You are having plethoras of discussions, of sightings. So, that is what is taking place. Earth's place in the ascension of the universe. Thank you, Mother. Someone has said that Earth's ascension is different from that of all other places in the universe. Earth has been called a DNA library, for instance. It's been said to be a place where different galactic species have been seated, as a kind of experiment. It's also a free will zone, and not every part of the universe is. And it's also been said to be a place that's having a little difficulty around ascension, whereas other planets are all right with it. Can you help us understand Earth's place in Ascension, Mother, please? We need to differentiate between Gaia and the humans. And when I call you humanity, I mean all of you. Some of you are star seeds. Some of you are pure human. It is a mix. You are very diverse species. But you are only part of that collection that rests within upon Gaia, and even within Gaia. We say to you, it has been delayed many times. False starts. And you are correct in your understanding, we will never interfere with your free will. And it is peculiar that I have offered you this gift of raising up, of returning to your original plan, and my plan, but it was also yours, and to have so many who claim belief in the divine say, I am sorry, I am not interested in doing this. Now, when I say this, I am not even addressing the interdimensional reality. I am addressing the refusal to engage in love, to engage truly in love. Within that, there is peace and joy, creation, expansion. Throughout the universe, and in fact throughout the multiverse, there are many planets and civilizations that shake their heads because there is such hesitancy, refusal, a flat-out no in so many cases it is inconceivable. Now, you live in an infinite universe with an infinite number of realities. So of course within that refusal is a possibility. But it is a potentiality that is so rarely pursued or chosen. So, yes, that is why there have been delays in other times, in other situations, like Atlantis. We were prepared. All of you who are listening were aware. Some were prepared, some were not. 
some of you were those who said no. It matters not. But as we say, this does not, this particular scenario, this particular film, to use your analogy, does not go on indefinitely. So the free will is not removed. You have, in many of your cultures, elections, and enough of you have elected to shift to a higher realm of consciousness, or to descend this higher consciousness into your physical form, into your expanded consciousness of heart. So are there those who have said, and who continue to the very last moment to say no. Yes. That is all right. The angels are still polishing their grids. The galactics are still holding you in a cocoon of love. Think of the young child who is overtired, exhausted, and has probably had too much sugar, who is throwing a tantrum and saying, I won't go to bed. You all know that that child is going to bed. They will either fall asleep in their mother's arms or on the sofa, or you will carry them to bed where they will be out like a light. So it is with humanity, only you will not be out like a light, you will be on like a light. I am asking you to bring your focus to this ignition, but then I am asking you, let us focus on what is really at hand yes, Gaia, yes, universe, this universe in particular. But you, you have begun by saying that I am not simply a god among gods. I am the mother, and I am asking and inviting you to join with me. Is there really any further conversation to be had? No, mother. There is not. That is the aim of all our lives. That is correct. And the joining in our love is what you most yearn for. Even when you are belligerently saying no, you are yearning for this. There is not one being in this entire scenario, human or galactic, that is not yearning for this divine convergence of love. So yes, this is, as we are coming to the completion of this part of your journey, both of In Light Radio, Michael's wonderful platform The 2012 Scenario, my plan, I am calling you. Gabriel has sounded her horn. The role of light workers. Thank you, mother. What role do you want light workers, and especially the light workers listening to this program, to fulfill in the time between now and the divine convergence? Many of you play different roles. As you know, as the channel will review yet again, some of you are way showers, some of you are gatekeepers, some of you are pillars. There is a tendency, because of the ego in the human race, to always want to be unique and special. So it is ironic, and sweet, that so many light workers do not simply wish to be simply going through the portals, interdimensionally anchored in love, starting already upon the Nova Earth. They don't want to be the audience, as it were. They want to be behind the scenes, in the film, on the screen. So I give you all a very special role in acknowledgement. Of course you are unique and special. You are the only one that doesn't know it. I ask you to hold the energy, to hold the space, because that is the fuel, the combustion point for liftoff. I do not casually come and suggest visualization. I am asking you to unite the unification of all. I am asking for your participation. Could we do it for you, to you? Of course. But that is the uniqueness of this ascension and movement is the partnership. So I am asking each of you to do your part, and not just for ten minutes, but until it is done. And there will be times when the energy is, because of these ignition points, because of these amplifications, you will say, I think I am coming out of my skin. I don't know if I can do it. Simply breathe. Call me, call Michael, call Gabriel. Keep going. That is what I am asking you to do. I am asking for you, each of you, my beloved ones, to fulfill your promise to me. Thank you, Mother. Is there to be duality anywhere in the universe after ascension? And if the answer is no, then where are those who refuse the offer of ascension going to go? One of the delightful traits of the human race is your curiosity. So not only do you want to know about your process, you want to know about where the relocation program is if you choose not to cooperate or expand. It is not within this universe. You understand that I have birthed many universes. Perhaps you do not. But I have and so they will be in an alternate place. It will be beautiful and pleasant. 
it is not my way or the way of all to punish, because there has been an exercise of free will. That was the arrangement, the plan. So if you choose to continue in a vibration that is comfortable to you, if you say to me, Mother, I do not wish to choose love, because it is that simple, that is all right. I will take care of you. Will our departed loved ones greet us on the fifth dimension? Thank you, Mother. This ascension is different from all other ascensions, because we will be ascending with our physical bodies. But this brings up an interest in question, because the fifth dimension is equivalent to the mental planes in the afterlife. But most people go to the mental planes without their physical body. That leads to the question of where we are going to be ascending to in our physical bodies. Is our destination the same as the mental plane? Will we be able to meet with our loved ones on the astral plane and the mental planes who don't have bodies? Is it a new area of the universe that's being opened up? It is a new and different area of this universe that is being opened. Do not expect to find those who have gone before you who have transitioned out of form to be there waiting for you. You are not dying, and therefore there is not that complete access. Now, will you have the capacity to have clear communication? Yes, because you have gotten rid of some of your predisposition to limitation. But you are coming to a place of physical form. So it is not in your traditional sense what you would tend to think of this as heaven. That is not where we are taking you. It is a reality of the heart, but it is with a yes, unique experience of being in your beautiful form. The form that you chose and designed. Of course in concert with your beloved circle, but that you chose to bring to earth during this time of shifting. So it is indeed a unique plan. You know we are always inventing new things, dear one. Always, Mother. Thank you very much for gracing us with your presence and answering so many of our questions. I give you my love and my heart, my blessings. Farewell. Farewell, Mother.